Well, for more insight into what China calls the new normal you just heard about, let's cross to current affairs commentator Ina Tangent in Beijing and also in California, Dan McClory, head of China Investment Banking at Burnham Securities. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us. Ina Tangent, first of all, we heard just a handful of people in China there. They seem pretty bullish, though. Uh, are we overestimating the impact that this slowdown is having on China? Well, I, I think so. I mean, uh, a lot of markets are concerned. There should be uh, room for concern. I mean, there, the overcapacity was not only in China, but worldwide, as you saw, people went on a commodities producing binge and a lot of the luxury uh, companies were enjoying very, very high profits and sales within China. But if you look at the overall consumer sentiment in China, it's a remarkable. China uh, is number two in the world in terms of positive outlook and very, very low on the negative. The people expect things to continue here. And I think it's really important that people start looking at slightly different metrics than the ones we've used in the past. China is going through a transition period as it switches to a consumption-based model. And this, we should be looking more at employment and also disposable income. Dan McClory, what do you think about that? Should we forget these headline figures, 7% GDP, 6.8%? The Chinese government seems quite pleased that people are essentially consuming more, and that means that the economy is perhaps moving towards this transformation to what it calls the new normal. Do, do you buy that? Well, I think we definitely shouldn't ignore the headline figures, but they're absolutely not as dramatic as the tumult that we saw last August, or even in the stock market the last couple of weeks. Uh, and you've both pointed out some very important developments, which is uh, consumer spending is up 11 percent. Uh, services account for 8 percent growth, and they're over half of GDP now. So this rebalancing is actually taking place. We're seeing it play out in real time. And I think we're going to see an emphasis on productivity as opposed to out-and-out -out growth. That is becoming more efficient about how the economy operates and how it grows, and not just the top headline figures. When you say efficient, though, Dan, are you talking about the labor market, the way people work, the kinds of jobs they do? Well, clearly, um, employment is up. Employment is robust and employment is up. I mentioned consumer spending, but it's, it's moving away from the industries where there's severe overcapacity. You know, we're all aware that for years, China functioned as the factory to the world. And global consumers benefited because of cheap goods uh, and, and high-quality products that were coming out of China. Um, that's changed. And China knows it. And rebalancing the economy to services and moving people into more efficient ways of working uh, is, is a way that's going to continue to lift the economy up, just not at the stellar growth rates that have been seen over now the past 25 years. Ina Tanjin, is all of this happening a bit too quickly for everybody? We've seen this radical transformation of China uh, in the matter of around 25 years or so. Is, are things moving too quickly for people to really understand and really grasp? Are we in the West just obsessed with this up and down growth? And should we be taking a more long term view of things? Well, there's a number of uh, issues that's involved in terms of Western attitudes towards China. Quite frankly, when China embraced capitalism, there was always this theory among many um, on the conservative side that all of a sudden democracy would break out because this is the end of history, as Fukuyama uh, put it. But that hasn't happened. And so people are still questioning, what is this new model? How does it work? And how is China doing this? In, in terms of uh, this su new supply-side economics that uh, Beijing is pushing, it's not just about um, making um, a capacity more uh, um, greater. It's about more efficient. China is really trying to break through this middle income trap. And in order to do that, they need to bring the issues like the amount of energy per unit of uh, GDP that they actually produce. And this is going to be very important. The, remember, this rebalancing is not about getting rid of manufacturing. Quite the opposite. What they anticipate is regionalizing a lot of their manufacturing to other areas, especially in the stands, where they can see real opportunities. People put in jobs will now have disposable income, and Chinese goods are still 20 to 30 percent less expensive than their European uh, and American counterparts. On the streets, Ina, do you see enough demand if we're talking about moving China to a more uh, consumption-driven society? Do you really see that among everyday Chinese people? Oh, absolutely. I mean, in the old days, uh, if you were talking three, four years ago, you'd go to high-end restaurants you could not get in. Now they're empty or closed. 
And, but you, when you go to the mid-tier restaurants, which are offering better value at a, uh, for price, excellent food, they're packed. And you see this in a lot of areas. There's this move towards, under, uh, towards value. You're starting to see uh, in consumer uh, areas, in the automobile industry, people are moving it towards cheap and cheerful domestic products that are made here in China because of price and value. So this, I think, is going to be the continuing trend as, as Chinese consumers kind of climb up their knowledge base and understand what they're buying. Dan McClory, one for you, the head of the Statistics Bureau talking about these figures out today, you talked about China facing a, a daunting task ahead. What does that mean, and is that perhaps overly sobering language? Well, I think it was purposely put that way just to underscore the importance and to draw attention to, to what's happening here. Again, the economy is rebalancing. Um, they're moving from a model that has greatly emphasized manufacturing to consumer and services. Um, attempting to major task in the face of that. And then when you look at the international monetary policy that's taking place with the yuan, there are many end of time. So stopping and looking at that and understanding that, you know, growth leveling or plateauing or slightly declining uh, not world reaction in the city marks yesterday and today, uh, but also in uh, Europe and the rest of the world, especially in New York. There was not a tumultuous effect um, because of these figures coming out. So this was very much seen as the, the soft landing that's talked about, and we did not have uh, the drama of uh, past announcements of uh, similar declines.